This installation guide is for a Nissan Rogue. The part installed in this video is a Curt model number 56033 custom 4-flat wiring harness. 4-flat connectors are needed to connect the tow vehicle's operating lights to the operating lights of most non-braked trailers. You will need the tools seen here to complete this installation. Hey, what's up everyone? If you're going to be towing a trailer with your Nissan Rogue, you're going to need to have a trailer wiring kit installed. Um, today we're going to go ahead and install the custom wiring kit by Kurt that requires us to get behind the passenger side paneling and behind the driver side paneling inside the cargo area. To get into the paneling behind the, the trailer or behind the tail lights, we'll need to remove a center panel here, the flooring, and some cargo anchor screws here and here. Okay, we're going to go ahead and remove the flooring here. We'll start with the mat, set it aside over here. And all we need with this guy is to fold them up. Okay, and to take the tray out, we've got twist fasteners here that have, it has an arrow on the head and one on the tray. What we're gonna do is just line the arrows up. We're gonna do the exact same thing on the passenger side here. And this will allow us to lift the tray up. Okay, now that we have the flooring out of the way, we can now see that we have a couple of cargo trays to to remove as well. And to do that, we, there's, there's gonna be about three or four screws that we need to remove. Looks like we can use a Phillips screwdriver or 10 millimeter socket. I'm gonna go ahead and use a 10 millimeter socket to get this paneling out. And I'm gonna have one that's kind of hidden underneath the uh, jack here. Okay, only three on the driver's side here to get this tray out. Now that we've got them all taken out, we'll go ahead and just lift up on it. it just pops right out. I'll put it right here in the center. Now on the passenger side, we're going to get this cargo tray out. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to remove the door here, set it over to the center. And it looks like we do have three screws on this side as well. Let's go ahead and take these out. Okay, and it kind of just pops right out. Set that aside. I'm going to go ahead and take these two trays and set them aside over here. Now that we have the trays out, we, we need to remove two cargo hooks, one on the passenger side, one on the driver's side. Uh, this is the passenger side here. We're using a flathead screwdriver just to lift up the cargo hook. And then we have a cap that needs to come out, and I'm just going to come in from the side here and just wedge it out there. And you can see that we have a Phillips or 10 millimeter screw that we can take out. I'll be using a 10 millimeter socket here. Okay, it just comes right out. We'll set it down in the center here. And we're gonna do the same thing on the driver's side. Okay, now that we have the cargo hooks removed, our next step is gonna to be to remove this center panel here. Um, I'm looking for any fasteners that hold this guy in. It looks like we have two. One here on the passenger side, one on the driver's side here. Again, I'll be using a flathead screwdriver to wedge the head out of the fastener and it'll just pop right out. Now we're going to do the passenger side, get the head out, I'll just go ahead and pull it out there and set it aside. Now that we have the two fasteners out, that'll allow us just to pull straight up on this center panel in here and pop right out. Set that aside there. Now that we have the center panel removed and we have our cargo anchors removed, we can go ahead and just pry open this uh, passenger side paneling here. And I'm just going to use a trim tool and I'm going to wedge right inside the door seal. Just kind of work it away from the body. The 
to give myself more room to reach in here and not smash my hands, I'm gonna put my pry tool and just kind of prop it up here, just like that. Okay, now that we have the paneling pulled away from the body on the passenger side, um, our wiring connector that we're looking for is right here. And I'm just gonna kind of pull it away from the body so that you can see. And to get the connector uh, pulled apart, there's just a little button right here. We just press that button and give it a simple pull and it'll slide right out. Um, we're gonna need to do the same thing on the driver's side. So let's go ahead and do that before we get our uh, wiring harness put in. And again, we're gonna use a trim panel tool just to kind of pry away the paneling from the body. You can grab down at the lower end just to kind of give it some leverage to come out. There we go. Now, just like on the passenger side, I'm gonna go ahead and wedge my trim tool in between the paneling and the body just so we can have a bit more access here. Um, you can see that there's quite a bit of connectors back here. Um, to determine which one we need, we're gonna follow the tail light wiring harness, which is right here, right to the connector here. And I'm gonna pull it away from the body just so that you can get a better view of it. Okay. And again, just like the passenger side, to disconnect these two connectors, there's a little button at the top here. You just push it in and pull, it comes right out. Uh, we do need to find a ground for our wiring connector. And I did see a body ground here. So we're gonna use that to ground our trailer connector. Okay, now that we've got that pulled apart, we're gonna take our passenger side connector from the trailer lighting kit. I mean, we know that it's the passenger side because it's called out by the color green. Kind of, it's a T-connect that we can plug right into here. And once you hear the click, it's in nice and tight. We'll do the same thing on the taillight side. And now we're gonna go ahead and put this back together on the body here. We'll get everything, the eight excess wire kind of tucked away so that it doesn't get caught up in the paneling. That looks good there. Now we can go ahead and just remove our trim tool and get this paneling back into the body here. Just line up the slots and give it a pat. Goes right back. Okay, now that we're getting over to the driver's side, um, you'll notice that there's quite a bit more wiring we have to deal with on the trailer light connector. We have a tail light converter here. Um, we, our black wire is going to be our power wire that we run to the battery that activates this tail light converter. Um, green wire we already ran the, to the passenger side. The red wire, the yellow wire, and the brown wire, and the white wire will all be running up behind this paneling here and we'll click in with the um, T-connector here. Okay, let's go ahead and get our connectors plugged in here. Again, we wanna hear the click. It lets us know it's secured. Same thing on the second one, click. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and remove the body ground screw here. I'm gonna use a 10 millimeter socket to do that. Okay, then I'm going to take our ground wire here from our trailer, trailer light connector. I'm just going to set it right in here. And we can just put it right back to the body. Okay, we'll tighten it up with our 10 millimeter socket. Okay, great. Now with the excess wiring, again, we're just going to get it nice and tucked in here so it doesn't get in the way when we're putting our paneling back together. One thing I do want to mention is that uh, your black power wire here, um, you do want to route it underneath the panelings so that it's you have really easy access to it after you've secured the paneling to the body there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just remove my trim panel tool and we'll pop this driver's side paneling back in place. And again, you just line up the fasteners and the holes in the frame or in the body and just give it a pat, it goes right back in place. Okay, now we're putting our center paneling back together here. And again, you're just lining the fasteners up with the holes in the body. And now you're gonna give it a pat. 
you know, hear them pop back into place. There we go. Okay, and the last thing on the center panel is to put our body clips back in here. Okay, and to do that, I need to fully extend the center cylinder out and then put it in, line it up with the hole, and then just push. It clips right in. I'll do the same thing on the driver's side here. Push in, push the clip in, and that's our center paneling. Now we're going to put back the cargo hooks um, on the passenger side and on the driver's side. Nice and tight. Put our cap back down, our latch back down. Now let's do the driver's side. Nice and tight. Put our cap back in place, our hook down. Okay, you can see here this is our black power wire that's going to be ran to the battery that we routed underneath the uh, driver's side paneling. Um, this wire is going to be extended underneath the vehicle and then up to the battery in the engine compartment. Um, so we, we definitely need to find a way to get underneath the vehicle. And there's several, several plugs that we can use around the back here. Um, I've chosen to use this flood plug here. Basically what I'm going to do is just pull that out and then feed our wire through it. Okay, so with this wiring kit, they do give us uh, enough 10 gauge wire to run it to the battery. I'm going to go ahead and take one end and connect it to our converter power wire here using a 10 to 12 gauge yellow butt connector. Make sure it's pushed in all the way. Give it a good squeeze and crimp it down. And we'll give it a good tug just to make sure it's all together here. It's not going to come loose. So now we're going to take all this excess wire and we're going to push it through our flood plug hole here. And it's just going to come right out underneath the bumper. Okay, now that we have our wire pushed through, um, I'm going to go ahead and make a small cut in the flood plug that the uh, wire can sit in. Okay, we'll just slide the wire right through that. And we're going to push our plug back into the body here. We get a nice and neat run wire right through the flood plug there. Okay, now that we have all of our pieces put together in the cargo area here, we're gonna go ahead and put our cargo trays back together on the passenger side and driver's side. I'll start with the passenger side here. Again, we have three screws going into the floor and I'm using a 10 millimeter socket to tighten them up. Okay, put our cargo tray back in, put the door back on. Now we'll move over to our driver's side and do the same thing. Okay, next we're gonna put our center cargo tray in. Um, and before I do that, I'm just gonna take our four flat wiring harness here and pull it over, put the cargo tray in. Just gonna lay that right over and all our flooring will come right on top of that. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and lock the twist fastener on the driver's side here and just simply turning it away from the arrows. Go ahead and flip over the cargo area. The cargo flooring here. Come right over top here. Sits nice and neat. And then we'll put our floor mat down. Okay, now that we have everything installed inside the vehicle and we have our power wire ran outside the flood plug, um, we need to get it run up to the battery, which is located on the driver's side. So before you go to run the, your, your wire underneath the vehicle, you want to take a few minutes to inspect underneath the vehicle. Um, we want to come up with a plan of the safest and best route to run the wirings, avoiding any um, hot places like the exhaust, sharp edges, or moving parts that can smash the wiring. Um, I determined that the passenger side following the brake lines all the way down to the firewall was the safest place to go. And then I'll cross over on the firewall and come straight up next to the battery in the engine compartment. Okay, now that we have the wiring ran to the front of the vehicle, we're gonna go ahead and track back and 
put a zip tie to secure this wiring down about every 12 inches or so anywhere that you think it might sag down a little bit or get caught on a moving part okay we've got the hood open now um, identified the battery here we've got the positive side the negative side we definitely want to hook up to the positive side um, I've got my wire ran up from underneath the vehicle up next to the firewall and the brake lines here and I'm gonna come up next to the brake reservoir I'm gonna lay it aside for just a moment while we get our fuse holder connected to the battery post here so I'm gonna go ahead and take off this cap so I can see exactly what we're dealing with it looks like we have three attachment points here one here one here and one here it makes more sense for me to go to this one it would be a lot be a lot cleaner now we'll go ahead and get the ring terminal put on the fuse holder wire here need to make sure that the copper is actually touching the metal here when it gets crimped we'll just put this back on right here get our nut back on tighten it back down just nice and snug is okay and we want to go ahead and take the wire that we ran underneath the vehicle and connect it to our fuse hold holder wire here we'll go ahead and connect it here um, before I do that I want to make sure it looks nice and neat and I'm gonna route it underneath here okay so I'm gonna go ahead and take this excess wire coming up from underneath the vehicle and cut it to fit here Expose the copper on it so that we can put our butt connector on. Okay, that's our connection. We'll go ahead and clean it up here a little bit. And we'll put our 10 amp and our 10 amp fuse holder here and that will power our converter box. Put our cap over. Okay, we're gonna get our positive terminal cap back on and that'll complete our install. Okay, so when you're ready to tow a trailer and we'll go ahead and just pull up the flooring here you're going to take the four flat, just going to pull it right out, lay it across right over the door seal here. You don't want to put it over the door latch or it'll get smashed. You're going to lay it nice and flat here. We can go ahead and just close the door right over top of that there. I'll go ahead and open it back up just to show you that. no smashing going on or any pinching or cutting of the wires um, and then when you're not using it we'll just fold it right back up put it right back in the cargo tray looks nice and clean in here to learn more about the products seen in this video or to schedule an installation by a u-haul hitch professional visit us online today at uhaulhitches.com